In this video, I'm gonna show you two easy methods to make clickable columns just like this. You can link to any URL you want, and you can even add rel nofollow attributes or open your links in a new window. Let's dive in. In the previous tutorial, we built this pricing table from scratch using the free version of Elementor. Uh, it's built with columns and just some content that we centered inside, and we have a button at the bottom, and then we added the hover effect. But I'd really like to make the entire pricing box clickable. So you shouldn't have to find this button to, to purchase the plan. We want to make the entire area clickable. Unfortunately, this isn't possible with a native version of Elementor. So we're actually going to build this functionality ourselves. And there's two ways we can do it. So let's go back to our layout here in Elementor. And our options are we can either add a plugin that lets us turn these columns into clickable columns, or we can do it with custom CSS. So let's do the easy way first, which to be honest, I think is the best route and the one that most people choose. So let's go back to our WordPress admin panel. Okay, here we are in the WordPress admin panel and we just need to add a plugin now. So let's go to plugins, add new, and it's a free plugin in the WordPress repository. So let's just search for it. So Make columns clickable Elementor. So we're gonna install now. And activate. And with this plugin, you definitely don't need to worry about slowing down your site or plug and bloat or anything. It's literally like a five kilobyte PHP script. I think it's 35 lines of code for the actual plugin. So, I mean, it's gonna have no impact on your site speed whatsoever. And then we'll go back to our layout here and we'll just refresh so it uh, pulls the plugin in. And you will see that if we go to our column layout here, click on column, and now there's this new box that didn't exist before and it's called column link. So we can put any link in here we want. And if you click the settings button right here, the little gear icon, you can add a no follow attribute if you want or open it in a new window. So we'll turn off no follow, but we'll open a new window. And you can set custom attributes uh, that would mostly be used for maybe advanced link tracking with Google Analytics or something, but we're not gonna do that for now. I'm gonna just click update. So if we hover over it in the back end, it doesn't seem to have any effect, but let's go to the front end and see if it makes a difference. So we'll refresh the page. And you will notice now, if we hover over any part of this column, it becomes clickable. So it'll take us to the link we specified. And the other columns, which we haven't set up yet, if we go to there, it's not clickable, not clickable. So that's the easy way, but it's not the only way. And there's actually another solution that you can do with pure CSS, nothing else. And we're gonna use pseudo elements to do that. It's kind of cool. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So the only step we need to take before we write our CSS code is we have to add a class to the column that we wanna make clickable. And that's how WordPress knows which uh, column you want to be able to click. So we are going to edit this column, the middle column here, and we're gonna add a class. We'll go to advanced CSS classes, and we already have one uh, when we assemble this pricing table. We're gonna add another class called clickable, and we'll click update. All right, so we'll go back to the front end here, and we'll refresh, and if we right-click this element and inspect, and let's go to the parent element here, and you'll see it's got the classes, my pricing table, which I added and clickable. So now we need to do some targeting based on this. And what we're gonna do basically is there's already a link here. So this link, it just goes to this page and it opens in a new tab, uh, but it's a working button. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create what's called a CSS pseudo element. We're gonna create a CSS pseudo element for this button and we're gonna stretch it the entire width of this column so that when you click it, it also contains the link of this button. So whatever whatever link you set inside your box will stretch the full length or the full height and width of your column. So if you have the pro version of Elementor, you can just use the custom CSS function, which is right here under advanced custom CSS. And you can write your CSS code here, but you don't need it. We can actually do it completely with the free version. So let's go to uh, your WordPress customizer and we'll go additional CSS, and we can start writing our rules. So let's just inspect this to get the, uh, the classes that we need. Go back to our parent class here, okay. So what we're trying to do 
is first we need to create the pseudo element. So let's go to our button. And our button is an A, let's target any link. So any A element inside our clickable class. So clickable containing an A. And we want to create a pseudo element called a before element. Now to create a pseudo element out of thin air, all you have to do is type the line content and blank quotes. And it will now, you'll see this before element just appeared. If I delete it, it goes away and put the quotes, it comes back. But it's zero pixels wide and zero pixels high. So we need to make this uh, before element larger. So first we're gonna make it display block, which will make it basically be like a box. That's step one. And now we wanna change its position to absolute. And what this does is if you have an absolutely positioned element, you can tell it where you want the edges of it to be. So we can move it anywhere within its parent or even outside its parent. So we're gonna change it to position absolute. And we're going to specify the outer edges of where we want it to be. So we want it to be uh, zero from the top, zero from the left, zero from the right, and zero from the bottom. And in theory, that would make it as large as this box, but we're gonna run into a problem and you'll see, but let's do that first. So we'll go top zero, right zero, left zero, bottom zero. So now if we hover over our before element, you'll see that it's actually only as big as this can, the uh, button wrapper right here. And if you wanna know what's happening, it's because your absolute, so when positioning an absolutely positioned element, it's relative to the nearest parent that has position relative. And so if we set it to the top zero, left zero, right zero, bottom zero, and this is the nearest relatively positioned element, then it will only be as big as this element. So to break it out of this container, we need to change this parent element, which you will see if we go to computed, and we scroll on to position for this element. Sorry, for this element, you will see that the uh, position is relative. So we need to change this to a static element and we'll go out to the next biggest container and we'll keep going until we get to the parent that is the size of the column. So we want to target the Elementor widget class inside our clickable class. So we'll go dot clickable, dot elementor widget and the rule we want is just position static instead of relative so now if we do that and we go back to our before elements you will see it is now as big as the interior container for a column but it's still not as big as the column so let's keep going up until we find the element that is that size and it looks like it's probably the Elementor widget wrap. So if we go back to the computer position, it says Elementor widget wrap position relative. So we need to target this one now. So we can add a rule here because we want the same rule. It's we want to turn it to position static. So we'll hit comma. We also want to target clickable Elementor widget wrap position static. And if we go back down to our before element, you'll see it is now the complete size of the column. So that's step one. And if we close our inspector here and we hover all over our column, you will notice it is now clickable. And if we delete, let's copy and delete for now. If you delete that and you come in here, you'll see it's not clickable, not clickable until it comes into this div here and it's now clickable. And if we put that code back, the entire thing is clickable. So that's it, it's a complete CSS solution. And basically all you have to do is add one link to your box and um, whatever link settings you use here. So if you set rel no follow on the button or open in a new window, all those settings will be transferred to the before elements. And so if we click here, you'll see it'll open in a new window or a new tab. So that's it. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get all our new content every week. If you've got any questions about this video or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. Now get out there and build that website.